Hello everyone and thanks for watching Fast Track Tutorials. In this video series we are going to do something a little bit different than usual. So MSI was kind enough to sponsor me with their latest Creator Z16P laptop which has been specifically targeted towards creators and artists. Now they basically thought we should just go nuts with it, test out this laptop and give my honest opinion. And that's what we will be doing for this tutorial series. Now as someone with a desktop background I am actually seriously impressed by the specs of this laptop. It features the latest 12th gen Intel Core i9 CPU along with a 3080 Ti GPU. Now next to this it also has new cooling technology which it will definitely need for the stuff that we are going to do on it. And it has an amazing 16x10 DCI P3 QHD Plus panel which I can already tell you from what I've seen is one of the best panels that I've ever seen. Now this panel also has touch and pen control and they also gave me a little pen with it which is really fun to use and really nice to just make some extra notes on my artwork. So what we are going to do for this tutorial is we are going to create an environment completely in Unreal Engine 5. But this environment will be a little bit different than normal. So this environment will be created precisely for two screenshots. The reason I say that is unlike a video game environment, this environment will be a lot less optimized. We will push in a lot more models. The models will not have great optimization because of course, if it is just for screenshots and maybe like some moving videos, you don't need to move around. However, in this case, that is actually quite nice because it means that we can really test out this laptop. The creation of this environment will be done during a time lapse, but I will be narrating over every single step and I will also be giving you extra information. So you will hopefully learn a lot from this tutorial course on how to quickly and efficiently put environments together, how to work on composition, how to work on lighting, asset placements, and a few other tricks that we can do inside of Unreal Engine 5. So let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. At the end of this video, you will hear some quick thoughts about the laptop from me, but at the end of the video series, you will hear my full thoughts on the laptop and a full breakdown on how I experienced working with this. Okay, so in this video, we will get the basics down of this environment. This means mostly getting our terrain in check and placing our rocks, as both of those will control the general flow and look of our environment. Okay, so let's get started with the tutorial. So as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm first creating just like a plain landscape inside of Unreal, very basic. Now I already got all of my models set up, so I got some trees from a random pack, I got some mega scan rocks, and I got my buildings which I created myself. And because this is going to be my center building, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to basically already place it, and already create like a camera to get sort of like an angle. This is quite important because you often have a center asset within your environment unless you are making an open world environment. So it's good to already define that center asset and its location so that you can then build everything around it. And now what I'm doing is you will sometimes see me just picking some of these rocks and everything from that area over there because it, it is a bit easier than for me going into my content browser. And I'm going to get started with the very first placement of my rocks. This one is the most important. It's also the most tricky one, which is why you will see me like playing around with it quite a bit. Don't worry about like scaling them up. For this kind of environment, which is not a game environment where you can walk around in, it's okay to scale things up because you will not get very close to it with the camera most of most of the time. So because of that, you can kind of like uh, play around with the scaling, even though that the resolution of your textures might become a little bit lower. So I'm trying to create like sort of like a corner. And basically, once I have this defined, everything will basically be um, altered based upon this location. So that is why you can see me spending quite a bit of time here, just making sure that everything is correct, playing around with all of my um, pieces and everything, just to get something interesting here. Also, what I often do, what you will not see me doing here, here I'm doing it, is I'm playing around with my camera or I'm looking into my camera. And just playing around with all of my models while I have that camera turned on. And also the nice thing about the Megascan assets is that they blend really well together. So you can actually just go ahead and uh, merge them into each other. And you won't often notice that there is like a difference. Except when there is an open end like you can see over there. So what you can see me doing here is I often just try to cover up the open ends with other rocks. So it's just like a lot of layering to get the rocks, the rocks done. You start with the big shapes. And then you go down into the smaller shapes. And this is always the same for an environment for almost everything. So you start with big and go to small. If I have a lot of buildings, I would start with just the buildings and then go down to like the street assets. 
Now, right now, the main focus is going to be over here are rocks. And then after that, it is going to be our terrain. And then it's going to be our buildings. The reason why we need to create our rocks and trains first in this case is because next to the center building, I still want to play around with where the locations of my buildings are. But in order to do that, I first need to know the locations of my rocks, which are very static assets. Like they are assets that just won't move because of nature. So what you can see me over here is I keep switching back to my camera. And later on, I will also show you a trick on how to actually have two viewports so that you can have your camera on one screen and then the rest on this one. Because right now, as I'm recording this, on the laptop, I have one of my other screens turned on. So I actually have two screens right now. I have my laptop screen and I have a bigger screen on which I am currently creating this. Just because it is a little bit easier for me since I'm used to using desktop screens to just get like a bigger overview of things. But yeah, so it is working quite well. I'm just trying to get like a general flow of the rocks on how they are placed right now. And for the future, it might look very strange what I'm doing. The reason it might look strange is because I, there is no terrain behind it. But what you need to imagine is that the terrain behind those rocks are at the same height as where the rocks end. So there will be like a flat terrain. Over here, I had like that idea that you often see where there's like a little pass. There, it's almost like a point where two big um, chunks of rocks kind of like come together and then they just kind of like flow up to a mountain. So you will see me making the mountain a little bit later. So that's just a general idea I had. So over here, I'm just trying to like define that and play, and play around with that. See? And then just like placing my rocks here and there just to see if I can get something that looks nice and interesting. Which uh, is starting to work out quite well. Now over here you can see me that sometimes I just try to like find smaller rock assets. Which you also have into in mega scans. And these assets you can kind of like place them once again to like fill up some of those annoying open spaces. But during this tutorial you will definitely see which rocks are my favorite ones. So over here I feel like that I've reached the end. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to build my way back. Because what I want to do is the goal of this environment specifically is like it is on a foreign planet or just like a planet in space. It has like a dome. So like we as humans made it livable, even though it is not livable uh, without the dome and the dome will come later. And I just want to have this almost in like a valley. So all of the buildings are created into a valley because it feels like. Being humans, that would make sense because if you have a lot of elements, you have a lot of wind and everything, uh, a valley will kind of protect you from that. So that's why I decided to go with that. Because if I if I imagine that we would travel all the way to another planet and build buildings there, we would want to have a space where the buildings do not risk getting destroyed or anything like that. Even though, of course, these are really, really sci-fi style buildings. So it's definitely not the type of architecture that we would be creating uh, at the time of recording this. But yeah, so over here, I'm just trying to play around with it. And sometimes I don't just want to have like one big straight wall. Like that looks a little bit boring. So what I like to do is I like to look at my silhouette, just like the overall rocks and everything. And then I sometimes just give it like, for example, a chunk that is sticking out to just make everything feel more organic. Because if you just have like a straight wall in reality, it just that just doesn't feel right to me often. So over here you can see me that I'm just like playing around with different assets to cover up those extra holes that you can see. But yeah, so that's something that you need to keep in mind. Try to keep it organic. Don't just go straight. Um, these are rocks that have been formed over many, many, many years. So they are pieces that are very flexible to kind of like have moved around. Basically. So yeah, for the rest, now at this point I got the basic shape. So I'm mostly just polishing. What I like to do is I like to get a little bit of like a terrace effect where the rocks are kind of like building up. So you can see that happening over there where we start with like a lower layer and then we have another layer on top and then we have another layer on top. And those layers, they go further back, which later on will indicate that they are sitting against a mountain. And then what we will do is we will have our terrain accommodate that. So our terrain will actually be up towards those areas where we have our rocks and then the terrain will flow into like dunes or like sand mountains or stuff like that. Over here what you can see is I'm just creating the back. Now the back I'm not spending a lot of time on because you can actually not see it because our cameras are only pointing towards one location. The reason I am making the back is because of shadows. 
So people often seem to forget that. They say that they are making an environment that just has one specific camera angle, but then they forget that sometimes, because of the location of the sun, it still needs to have stuff behind that camera angle to basically make everything feel extra realistic. Because if all of a sudden there are no shadows coming from behind, even though your sun is, for example, coming from behind, it will feel very strange. So over here, you kind of like see me playing around with this. And uh, later on, we are actually going to change this up a little bit because we are going to make our environment a bit bigger. But at this point, I did not really realize that yet. The reason I didn't realize it yet is because that's where the buildings come in. You kind of like, you need the buildings along with the rocks to kind of like make everything fit together properly and make everything accommodate with each other. So when creating environments, don't worry about keeping things flexible. You will need to start moving around. You might think that one thing is looking great, but then as soon as you start adding extra props you re or extra camera angles, you realize that it just doesn't really look logical. Now over here, you can see that I'm starting to adjust my terrain. I'm using the flatten tool into my landscape, and I'm basically just trying to find the right value that is roughly... It doesn't need to be precise, but it is roughly around the, si around the height of our rocks over here. And once that is done, what we can do is we can kind of just paint around it. I like to paint just in front of it. And then I often use my smooth tool, also in the landscape tools, if I accidentally go over somewhere or it's clipping inside of my rock too much. Also, don't worry too much if there is a lot of clipping, because remember, you can use smaller rocks to cover up those mistakes. Or you can always just go ahead and you can always just sculpt it out. So over here, right now, I'm mostly just tracing. It might look really silly, it might look really stupid right now, but I'm just basically tracing my terrain to a point where I know that once we have mountains, you won't really be able to see anything behind it. So over here, you can see that I'm just like, at one point, I'm just stopping because I know that I will have mountains in the back and those mountains, they will kind of like hide any of that terrain stuff. Now over here, it is a little bit annoying that you often need to play around with your flattened values to get it in the right location. What you want to do is, first of all, you just want to go ahead and just uh, get the right values down. You will see that you get like that really cheesy terrace effect where you just have like different layers that have a sharp fall off, as you can see over here. But don't worry about that because there are tools like erosion tools, smooth tools, hydro tools inside of the landscape tool, which can give you a better flow off, even though technically this terrain you will barely be able to see. You will only see very small glimpses of it at the front, But for the rest, we have foliage, we have buildings, we have all of this rocks, all of this kind of stuff that is covering it up. Now over here, you can see that I'm also doing like the back. So of course, you guys are not making the exact same environment as I have. So this might not be super useful for you to just um, fill this out. But we are pretty much done with it. And I do want to show you how I'm just going to quickly smooth this all out. And once we have smoothed it out, um, then the terrain is pretty much ready to go. Once we've done that, we can get started with our mountains, which is actually really cool because our mountains, they will have a, or they will use a new tool specifically in Unreal Engine 5 that is called Landmass. So if you want, you can already install that plugin. You just need to go to uh, window, yeah, window and then plugins. And then you just want to go ahead and you want to type in Landmass and then activate that plugin. So yeah, over here, you can just see me simply using the smooth tool. And that's pretty much all I need for now. I'm just using the smooth tool to basically smooth this out. Uh, even though I probably cannot see it, it just feels wrong. And I just want, don't want the risk that I can accidentally see it. But honestly, for now, this is fine. So we are happy to start with something like this. Now over here, you can see in my plugins, I go ahead and activate the landmass. Uh, I did need to restart my engine. That's why you can see that cut. And now what I'm first doing is I'm first placing a few more extra rocks here because I noticed from my camera angles that this area over here feels very empty. So I'm just going to create some random cliffs uh, that are just like sticking out and I am already planning. So in my head, I have a lot of stuff going on for like in the future. So what I'm doing here is I am already planning to have a building sitting in front of those rocks, which is going to look quite cool. However, for now, it is mostly just creating like uh, the layering rock effect over here just to get something interesting see you can see how much of a difference that makes just to have the rocks kind of like sticking out and not just have like one perfect circle of rocks sitting around it so this is once again to make things more organic you kind of just have the rocks growing almost in different ways and kind of like branching out almost like a tree 
and they are kind of like just branching out into different areas. Uh, but of course, unlike a tree, it's just really, really large pieces like this. Now, once again, because the camera is quite far away from this, I don't need to have this looking perfect. If there are a few small holes here or there, I'm not too worried about it. But the nice thing about these Megascan assets is that because they are so large, um, you often don't have a lot of holes or anything like that. Here you can see me just like using one that has a 360 degree, as you can see, that you can just use. And I'm basically just using that one to kind of like fill things up. And here you can see that I check on my camera. And even though there are holes around the back over there, you cannot actually see that because of the camera angles. So I know that I can just kind of like leave it. And if needed, I can always change it later on. Now over here, what you often also will see me doing from this point, because I am making stuff specifically to, towards um, a few different camera angles. We end up with two different camera angles. You can see me just keep going back to that camera angle. And while I'm in the camera, then I will be moving assets. Now over here, I'm just playing around with my terrain to see if I can create like a mountain effect. But um, I didn't really like doing it by hand. So instead, I went to plugins. I got my um, land mass plugin over here. And then what you want to do is you want to go into your terrain settings and turn on edit, enable edit layers. So click on your landscape in the world outlier and use enable uh, edit layers. Now what you have is in your landscape you will have a blueprint tab. And in this blueprint tab you can go to your blueprint brush and you can select the landmass blueprint. Wow, sorry, a lot of words. Now this one works pretty much the same as a spline. You just hold alt to create more points. So you can select the end point, you hold alt and then you move. And then you are selecting another point. And for the rest you can play around a little bit more with the settings. Most of your fall off settings in the settings they are used for like the height and then next to this there's another setting that I kind of forgot the name of so that will come in just a little bit um, if we just scroll down ah, over here the curl settings so the curl settings what you can do with this is you can really just give it that erosion effect and that mountain effect so that's what you can see me doing over here I'm just simply dragging my curl settings until I get something I want I want my mountains to not be too broken up I want to have them quite even and the reason I want to have them quite even is because they are going to become sand and sand is not really doesn't really have that much erosion so you can basically just like see me playing around a little bit more with my settings there isn't much to it you just need to know where the settings are and for the rest it's just like messing around with it and then over here what I'm going to do is I'm first of all placing one of my mountains here just to kind of like figure this out and make sure that it looks correct and just like continue to place a few more extra mountain pieces and almost give it the effect that they are growing inside of the mountain that we just created. And then later on what you can do, what I will also do is in my blueprint of the mountain, I will set my blending mode to max, which means that it doesn't have those holes uh, outlined across the mountain. But you will see me doing that later. I'm the kind of guy that gets distracted quite quickly. And then I see like something that I want to do and then... Uh, I just come back to like whatever I was working on a little bit later. So right now I got distracted by the mountains and that's why I went ahead and um, first of all focused on that before I continue on with the rest. As you can see over here. So now I will just go ahead and I will save my scene, go to the mountain, set the mode to max. And that is then pretty much it for the time lapse of our very first video. So over here, all I'm doing is the bits of terrain. And now we can continue to the next video. So let's go ahead and do an outro and then continue. Okay, so that was it for the very first video in this series. And we got quite a bit of stuff done. Of course, this is the beginning of the environment. That one is always quite tricky, but also the most important. Because we are trying to define our shapes and just the general space of our environment. Which is a lot more annoying to change once we already have like a bunch of stuff placed. Now, I must say that I'm so far really impressed with the laptop. I think it hold, held up really good, uh, pretty much as good as my desktop PC even. I will say that when we are running Unreal Engine 5 for a long time, it does get quite hot to the touch over here, but I can see the heating sink here. So this is where most of the heat comes from. I had a look at the internal temperatures and they are looking totally fine. So I'm not worried about it at all. Uh, the screen is also great and I'm really looking forward to continue working with this. 
Now, in our next video, what we will do is we will finish off the terrain. We will start by placing the buildings and the foliage, at which point that our level becomes a lot harder to run. So I'm quite excited to see how that the laptop holds up. So I really thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.